Hey guys, my name is Brendan and I'm on a Zoo to National Zoo Bennett Pro and welcome to our grassy woodland Avery. Now today is Crescent Species Day, which is a day that marks the anniversary of Australia's most famous extinction, the thylacine, also known as the Tasmanian tiger. It's also a day to reflect on all the species we have lost over the past century and also to reflect on what species we still have and how we can actually protect these guys in the future. Now first up, I've got our cheeky gallants. So this Avery is full of the animals you'll find around Australia. Some are iconic, while some are quite endangered. Guys, play! Now this guy here is Floyd, one of two gallants we have here. Say hello! Now these are probably the two cheekiest animals we have in the zoo. They're very naughty. Now glass used to be not as common as they are today. They used to be only found around the arid areas of Australia. So very well adapted to the harsh conditions of the Australian outback. But when white settlers arrived, we created a lot of forests and created the perfect habitat for these guys. Open grasslands and farmlands for these guys. As a result, they spread all over Australia. Now, as common as these guys are now throughout our suburbs and cities, sadly, they are declining, which is a big surprise. Recent studies and surveys have indicated that some of Australia's most common bird species, including these guys, magpies, willy wagtails, and kookaburras are on the decline. For these guys, their biggest threat is how they actually breed. You love it. Loves the sunflower seeds. Now, what I mean by that is, these guys are not like magpies. They will not build a nest. Instead, what they do is they actually will find a hollow log. Now, hollow logs in Australia are high competition. A lot of animals want them as real estate. Not just galahs, but other parrots, like lorikeets, rosellas, other cockatoos, but also possums, gliders, reptiles, and even owls. Now, to find a good hollow, you need to wait a hundred or so years for it to develop. So every time we take down a tree that has a hollow, that's a hundred years before we can replace that hollow. As a result these days, hollows are becoming very hard to find, which is making it very hard to, for these guys to be able to breed and continue to increase their population. Aren't you a good boy? <laughs> but there are ways of helping these guys. Now, even though these guys are still common, there are a number of birds that are facing a lot greater extinction. In this aviary, we also have the superb parrot, which is very common in Canberra these days, but nowhere else. They are one of Australia's most endangered species, and we'll try and see if we can get close to them. They're just over in this palm tree here. So if you've seen them in your backyard around Canberra, you'll be very lucky. There's only estimated to be a couple of thousand left. And the main reason is their habitat has disappeared and their hollows are not as common anymore. Canberra is one of the last places where there's actually good habitat for the superb parrots. Variety of different threats in Australia, not just from losing hollows, but also from pasturites. And our next critter is a very well known iconic animal, too. This is Sock, our shingleback lizard. One of Australia's most iconic skinks found, and they're found throughout most of arid Australia. Now, these guys, like all other reptiles, is that they can't produce their own heat. As a result, they need to find that source, normally through the sun but we've created a really great way for these guys to warm up, and that's our roads. The tar on the roads absorb a lot of heat, which attracts a lot of reptiles, like the shingleback, to sit on there in the mornings. Now, it's very common on a good Aussie outback road trip to come across these guys and find them on the sides of the road. Unfortunately, it's estimated that over a couple of thousand will die every day from road strikes. So it's really important, especially during our warmer months, it's starting to get warm right now, that when we do our road trips, to be mindful along the roads. If you do see them, just drive around them, or if you're confident enough, you can usher them across the road. Uh, whenever I do a road trip, I'm normally removing about 12 off the road to where I get with my cars. 
Now, these guys have another threat. As you can see, I'm holding him right now, and he's really calm. These guys are not aggressive at all, and unfortunately, it makes them a target for traffickers. Now, what most Australians don't realise is shingleback lizards are the most trafficked animal out of Australia. Unfortunately, overseas, they are very well priced, and they're very easy to capture which makes them a huge threat. So even though these guys are quite common, their numbers are also declining due to car strikes and also being smuggled out of Australia. He's a gorgeous boy. Okay guys, we are gonna meet another classic animal that a lot of people get confused. This here is Muppet. Muppet is one of three tawny frog mouse we have here at the zoo. And he was actually hand raised here. He was actually born and hand raised. So he's a bit of a character, Archie Muppet. He's also a hungry boy at the moment. Now, a lot of people tend to think that tawny frog mouse are owls, but in fact, they're not related to owls at all. They're part of a family called frog mouse, which is also closely related to another group of nocturnal birds called night jars. Now, what makes these guys different to an owl is, for starters, they don't have talons. They actually have claws. And, as you see with their beak there, it's not really curved for ripping flesh. It is on the old whole food, and these guys will live on a diet in the wild of mostly insects. Now, if you have a look down here, you'll be able to see, hopefully, that they don't actually have the talons. If they did, my hand would be really sore right now, so he's happy to sit on it. Now, Muppet's here, if you have a look behind, you've got um, her father, One Eye. Now One Eye, of course, hence the name, is missing an eye. Now One Eye was a wild bird that was brought in here because, unfortunately, he was attacked by a cat. They're estimated that a couple of million animals will die every day from feral cats and foxes alone. So it's really important that we do keep our cats indoors to protect these guys. And tawny frog mouse are very common and have adapted very well around our suburbs. Absolutely gorgeous. All right, we're gonna put him back and now we're gonna meet a very highly endangered species. Now Australia is full of a lot of unique animals, not just birds and reptiles, but also mammals. And there's a group of mammals that are quite endangered. They're called the critically rate range animals. Now that is a mammal or any animal that's normally 50 grams to five kilos. And the reason why they've been classified as a critical weight range is because they're highly vulnerable to feral predators like foxes and cats. And that's where the biggest extinction rate happens. And with our mammals, unfortunately, we have lost a lot in the last 100 years here in Australia. Alone in the last 10 years, we've lost two species of mammals and we actually have the highest record of mammal extinction rate in the world. Not something for us to be proud of. And we're gonna meet one of our most endangered mammals next. I'll just stuck around here. Okay, guys. Mammals are also nocturnal, which means they are active during the night and sleep during the day. And what we've got down here is some of our newest residents here at the zoo. These guys are called the brush tail betel. One of their favourite food is actually peanut butter. So let's see if they'll come out. Here we go, slowly coming out here. This is Wilbur. I think you've got a uh, his partner Wilma just in the nest too. Now there are five species of bettongs and they're part of a group of family called the macropods, which include kangaroos and wallabies. And these guys are one of the smallest. He only weighs around a kilo. 
And the brush tail bedong used to be found over 60% of Australia. Unfortunately, these days they're only found in around 1% uh, of their natural range. They're found only now in the southwestern remote corner of WA, Western Australia. And these guys, main reason why they've disappeared from most of their range is from foxes and cats. Now the unique thing about these guys is they've got a prehensile tail, just like a primate would. But instead of using it to swing in the trees, they'll use their tail to wrap around nesting material to build their nests. And these guys can have multiple nests in their territory. Now these guys are also incredibly important for our ecosystems. They're known as ecosystem engineers. And what that means is these guys actually help improve the soils around our forests and woodlands. And by doing this, what they do is, these guys can move around a couple of tonne of dirt a year. And this helps not only reduce the risk of fires, flood, but it helps seeds to germinate, creating a very healthy environment. Unfortunately, most of these critters have disappeared from most, we've got Floyd now who wants to get in on the action. Now, unfortunately, um, most of these guys have disappeared from most of Australia, which makes our woodlands and forests not as healthy as they should be. Floyd, you gotta get yourself in trouble. Now you can see why the glass are one of the cheekiest animals here in the zoo. <laughs> So we're going to be wrapping it up soon. But as I mentioned, today is Threatened Species Day, which is a day to look at our stunning animals. And we are very lucky to have absolute beautiful country with some of the most uniquest animals in the world. Unfortunately, they are all threatened with extinction, but there are a number of ways that we can help these guys at home and around our local areas. As I mentioned before, you guys can actually set up a nest box in your backyard. Not only will you get to experience the local wildlife looking after the young and creating a family, but it actually helps them continue to build up their populations. <laughs> Secondly, by keeping your cats indoors, a lot of these animals, like our birds, our mammals, will actually be able to thrive and hopefully make a good comeback here in Australia. And there are a number of ways from reducing plastic, watching out for animals on our roads. We could all make a huge difference in helping our wildlife. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Now, being that we are closed, we are still committed to conservation. So we hope to see you guys back here sometime soon when we do open up. Otherwise, thanks guys, and we'll see you soon. Bye.